In the last few years, various observations around the Milky Way galaxy revealed something somewhat unexpected. A collection of different clouds, usually molecular clouds, that were surprisingly massive and were somehow staying together without falling apart. And one of these clouds is extremely famous, and it's something I wanted to begin with just so that it would help you understand what we're actually discussing. And you can see this hydrogen gas cloud right here. Today this is known as the Smith's Cloud because it was officially discovered back in 1963 by Gail Bigger Smith, an astronomy student in the Netherlands who discovered it completely by accident. And while back then it was not clear exactly what this was, but just over a decade ago, additional studies on its trajectory determined that it was actually moving around the Milky Way and seemed to have left a certain region approximately 70 million years ago, but more importantly, was going to collide with a different region in approximately 27 million years from now. And when this happens, it's actually believed that it's going to produce an enormous starburst region, potentially creating hundreds if not thousands of new stars, with many of these stars very likely going supernova. And that's because this cloud seems to contain approximately 1 million solar masses in terms of gas, enough to initiate a major star formation. And that's because this object seems to be really large, over 11,000 light years in length and almost 3,000 light years in thickness. So it's actually a size of a typical dwarf galaxy. And because it's also really massive and also because it seems to be in one single piece, it was actually believed to be possibly either a remnant of an ancient dwarf galaxy, but just a galaxy that no longer contains any stars, or maybe even what's known as a dark galaxy, or literally just dark matter containing a lot of gas where the gas has not actually formed any stars yet. We've actually discussed this somewhat hypothetical concept in one of the videos in the description. But this was basically one of the primary candidates for this idea of dark galaxies. And as a result, a lot of scientists were always kind of curious to find out what this actually was, or what's going to happen to our galaxy when it collides with it in 27 million years. And in some of the most recent studies from just a few days ago, researchers tried to do just that. They actually tried to see if they could discover additional elements that are potentially already colliding with the Milky Way, but unfortunately it was impossible to see anything because the Milky Way galaxy was actually hiding this region from view. And instead, by accident, they discovered something else about the Milky Way. They actually discovered that certain layers in the Milky Way seem to be extremely different in terms of thickness. In the inner region, most of the gas seems to be about 330 light years across, but farther away on the outskirts, it seems to be double the size. And so the Milky Way galaxy potentially has an unusual, somewhat flattened shape near the center when it comes to gas, and is a little bit thicker on the outskirts. But it's not entirely clear why this is so. But despite this accidental discovery, not much new stuff was discovered about the Smith's Cloud. Except that previous studies potentially discovered that this is not a galaxy. This seems to be what's known as HVC, High Velocity Cloud. Or essentially, a chunk of matter that gets stretched by the gravity from the galaxy, which essentially produces this cometary appearance. But much more importantly, researchers were able to discover its overall velocity, which seems to be close to 300 km per second, and discover its composition. It seems to have extremely similar composition to what we actually find on the outskirts of the Milky Way. For example, here they discovered quite a lot of sulfur, which would be impossible if this was an early dwarf galaxy or if this was some kind of a dark galaxy. And so instead, this indeed seems to be a part of the Milky Way that somehow became ejected and turned into a really massive object. And by itself, this actually provided some explanations for why our galaxy sometimes seems to have unusual and anomalous chemical compositions that potentially came from somewhere else, so it could have been delivered in this way. But the question is, how did this form and where did it come from? With the other obvious mystery being, how is it that it's actually not falling apart while moving at these really high velocities? So basically here we had an unusually stable cloud moving at 300 km per second and basically not really falling apart, maintaining its overall shape. As a side note though, these types of objects and these types of collisions that then produce a tremendous amount of supernova all at once, right now are the best explanation for the existence of various regions in a galaxy such as the local bubble. This huge bubble over a thousand light years across where the solar system is located 
is essentially this empty space formed by tremendous amount of supernova that all happen around the same time. And because this bubble also contains huge chunks of hydrogen clouds in various places, a very similar collision with a very similar cloud several million years ago potentially explains what happened here as well. And so these types of clouds might actually represent an extremely common phenomenon that basically resupplies our galaxy and recycles a lot of material. But once again, where do they actually come from? And what caused it to leave the galaxy traveling in such a weird way? It must have come from somewhere on the outskirts, but the mechanism of ejection was impossible to explain. And so maybe even before this, it actually came from somewhere else. And here we do have one potential explanation that now might even have evidence. And it's a phenomenon researchers sometimes refer to as the galactic fountain. And here is one of the more famous examples of how this could work. This is the nearby Centaurus A. And so for many years it was believed that maybe this is how these clouds form. They are basically ejected from the center of the galaxy with some of these hydrogen clouds making these really thick formations that travel for millions of years eventually returning to the outskirts of the galaxy. But previously the only possible evidence we had was the famous Fermi bubbles. These huge bubbles visible in gamma rays that suggested some kind of a major emission from the center of the galaxy. Now though, researchers discovered something much more concrete. In one of the recent presentations based on the observations from the Green Bank Observatory, Felix Lockman accidentally discovered over 250 neutral clouds being blasted from the center of the galaxy and forming these really thick, really massive and very stable shapes. Which most likely represents a previously undiscovered population of clouds that seems to carry matter away from the nucleus of the Milky Way and then recycles it across the galaxy. And so this potentially suggests that the Smith cloud and a lot of similar clouds might have been formed in a very similar way. This was a result of some kind of a major emission from the center of the galaxy that ended up ripping apart a huge area near the center, throwing everything away, with many of these clouds moving at hundreds of kilometers per second. Actually, some of them are moving so fast, they might even escape the galaxy. And this is right now the highest outflow velocity of any gas cloud in the Milky Way. And quite a lot of them contain hydrogen clouds, a lot of molecules, a lot of dense gas, and of course elements like sulfur. But once again, it's unclear how they're able to maintain their stability and why they're not falling apart. Now the only explanation we have right now is the mysterious dark matter, but at this point nobody knows. Importantly though, this is a very similar phenomenon we observe in other galaxies and also seems to be extremely similar to the same phenomenon that formed the Fermi bubbles. So here it's expected to be either the emissions from the central black hole or possibly massive star formation that released all of this gas all at once. Either way, these clouds have to contain enough mass and enough gravity to prevent them from falling apart and eventually a lot of these clouds are going to come back and fall back into our galaxy in an extremely similar way to the Smith cloud, which is also most likely going to cause a massive star formation in the region of that collision. And so for all we know, it's quite possible that this is a new phenomenon we never knew existed, and it basically involves some kind of a fountain-like motion around the galaxy, where a lot of gas from the center gets ejected, re-enters the galaxy on the outskirts, recycles a lot of material, creates new stars, and over time reshapes the galaxy dramatically. And because here we're talking about over 200 different clouds, with all of them possessing a lot of mass, this is definitely a very influential phenomenon. We just have no idea what actually caused this, or what exact effects this has on a typical galaxy like the Milky Way. But this also suggests that there might be thousands of these clouds around the Milky Way, currently flying around, recycling various elements, and initiating star formation in various regions with many of these clouds still being on the outskirts and possibly much farther away from the disk of the galaxy. And if this is confirmed, this would be a really intriguing new phenomenon we've never known about. First of all, how do these clouds maintain their shape and what prevents them from falling apart? Second of all, what exactly produces all of this? Is it black holes or is it star formation? And I guess third of all, what exact effects does this have on our own galaxy? And while right now there are no answers yet, but I'm sure in the next few years we might have some. And so once we do, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. 
Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.